Now, where does the check come from? Where does the money come from? You, in, the economy is growing because of... Bernard, you're not answering the question. You're doing... Are you incapable of answering or are you trying to make believe you don't really know what I'm asking you? Let me answer it. No, 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 don't give me a Talmudic riddle. Where does the money come from for food stamps, welfare, medical assistance, legal assistance? Where does it come from? Where does the money come from? All the jobs that they are... I, you're not answering the question. You're not in the Diamond Center right now trying to peddle a, a, a fugazi. Give me an answer. Don't give me a fugazi answer. The economy... Bernard, what do you do, what do, you do for a living, Bernard? Real estate management in Brooklyn, USA. Williamsburg. Okay, so you're you're a worker. Do you get a check when you receive a, a paycheck? Do you get a paycheck? Absolutely, and I pay. And have you have you looked at your paycheck? Absolutely, you, and I'm. Proud and what percent of your income is removed by the government before you get it? It's a fairly large percent, is it not? That is true. Okay, so would you be willing to pay more of your paycheck? to give immigrants who sit on their behinds more welfare? Is that what you're saying? I work with all immigrants that do not sit on their behinds. They are working... Yeah, but that again, that's a personal image. That's not the statistical reality. Do you understand a statistical reality is different than Bernard's view of the world? So you know good immigrants who want to work like the Nigerian cab driver I had last night. But I am talking about the bigger picture. You're telling me the women who came in from Honduras last year with infected children are working now? Where are they working? Where are they working? They're working the system. You're telling me the Syrians who threatened to burn cities down in uh, Europe are working? They're working the system. They're working the liberals. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, I could say a little bit more, but I'll save it for the stage show in April after a glass of uh, champagne on stage. I'm planning it for April 9th, 2016. My birthday's March 31st. And I'm going to do my first live event in over 12 years, 10 years. I don't know how long it's been. I know it's going to sell out. I'll, I'll announce it December 1. You can buy tickets. It'll be gone within a week, most. We're in County Civic Center, and we're, we're thinking of broadcasting it on a pay-per-view basis so you can watch it wherever you are, you know, at a lower rate. But I know most people like to be there to meet people like themselves. And it's, knowing me, I cannot help but doing a show. I'm a showman. I'm incapable of just reading a speech. I'm not Bill O'Reilly. I don't fly out every other day to do another speech for 45 minutes from a book of mine. And uh, they clap and they go home. That's all. That's not what I do. I'm already staying up the middle of the night. I'm thinking of acts and performances, <laughs> show effects, sound effects. I mean, there's a part of me that likes to put on a show. I'm producing this performance myself. And, of course, I'm the star of the show. And uh, I'll have other people. I'm going to have the Doc Craft Band from Marin County. Good friend of mine. Love this guy. He's fought in five wars. He's an active doctor and a great musician. He's going to perform. And some of his band members are former sheriffs, which is interesting. I'm um, inviting up Robert Davi from L.A., who's going to do his thing. I've invited Laura Ingram to speak. And, of course, don't forget the morning show people on KSFO. You know who they are. Do I have to mention their names? Katie and who? Come on. They're going to be the introductions and the things and the, that. Teddy's going to be on stage. So I'm going to have the show broken up where I do the first act sober. And then I'm going to ask everyone who's a very uh, low sensitivity, actually high sensitivity, to leave the auditorium. I'll have the band play and I'll leave. I'll come back for act two and pour the first glass of champagne. And those of you who know what happens after two or three glasses, the auditorium is usually half full by the second glass because things happen in my head that are different. It opens up to a, a genie, truthfully, and it's sometimes it's not that pleasant to listen to, but the audience loves it. At least the guys do. The women go, ugh, that's disgusting. <laughs> they want to leave. <laughs> grab their boyfriend's hand. The boyfriend says, go without me, I'm staying. <clears throat> but some people walk out angry, and they really do. All you got to do is say one, like, a little off-colored word. I promise in the first act, no off-colored words. I'm, I'm up nights now. I'm having so much fun planning this event. I can't wait.
But that's so far in advance of six months from now. I got so many things coming before that. The book's out in two weeks. Government zero. And uh, the, the one problem for my live event is that Teddy's agent is being very difficult. The price he's asking is too high. I offered him one greenie per performance, and the agent is saying, no, you got to give him one for each act. And I said, well, that's a little high. <laughs> no, Teddy will be on stage. All sorts of good stuff. The world is so ugly. The world is so horrible that I, I can't tell you how people are hurting over it. I know this from the uh, show, what people respond to. They like humor. They like a little light moment of me imitating Bernie Sanders. I mean, that's... I hear people around the country are tuning in for that. Very, very big person in the media. Perhaps the biggest. Sent me an email saying, you're the talk of the entire media elite. Your Bernie Sanders imitations are shocking. They said they're, they're shocked that... I don't know his name. The guy from Saturday Night Live hasn't invited me. to. First of all, I wouldn't do it. I would not do television at all. But how come he hasn't... Lauren Michaels, I guess... Hasn't invited you. I wouldn't do it. It's not the same thing. Radio's different. Because if I had to do Bernie in person, I'd have to dress like him. And all of my old suits were given away to Goodwill 20 years ago. In fact, I think some of them I see on Bernie Sanders. I think his wife pulled him out of the trash bin. I saw her in the neighborhood a few weeks ago. Symbol shot. Do you want me to do it? So, because the, the, the story above that. Uh, is so bad on michaelsavage.com. It says, videos teach would-be Palestinian attackers how to stab Jews and kill them with actual drawings of where to stab people in their body. And Obama blamed the Jews for, for getting stabbed. John Kerry lectured the Jews that they're getting stabbed because they deserve it. All right, let's take some calls. Steve on KKAT in Utah, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Savage, good to talk to you. Hey, I'm a high school political science teacher, and... Uh, it's interesting to me, I live in a conservative area, interesting to me how liberal many of my students are on immigration. And it's because, I'm convinced, it's because the media they're exposed to is constantly telling them that you're not a nice person, you're not good if you don't want people in, don't let people into this country. And it is, uh, it's disconcerting. Well, here's the problem. Again, you can talk about a subject generically or specifically. So if you say, I'm against all immigration, that's not reality. Reality is, you're not against all immigration. The answer is, no, I'm not against all immigrants or immigration. I'm against public assistance welfare recipients on uh, who come here and don't work. I'm against illegal immigration. I'm in favor of legal immigration if it's controlled and organized. That's two different things, legal and Im illegal. That's what you have to teach the children. Oh, Am I right or wrong? I do. Absolutely, I do. That's the only answer. Don't get mad, because that's what they want you to do. They want to provoke you into anger and rage. So you say, no, I'm against illegal immigration. I'm in favor of controlled legal immigration. That means we have to have a national discussion of which immigrants, from which country, what education level, what health level. What do you want to take people in who need, let's say, a double heart transplant, a, a, a double lung transplant? That's what you want for an immigrant? Who's paying for that? Who's going to pay for that? Let the first liberal stand up and pay. Let Larry David stand up and say, I'll pay for that lung transplant. Let Seth Rogen, that fat sack of you-know-what, stand up and say he'll give up one dime from his fat Canadian pocket for a double lung transplant for an illegal, illegal immigrant. Let all of these other lovers of immigrants stand up and say they'll pay for them. They don't do that. Well, they'll say, well, we're a rich country. We can afford it. Corporate, they'll stop mumbling. Corporate welfare. A defense Department bombs. And then, you know, you heard the old argument. A typical Bernie Sanders answer. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero because I have a big chapter on this called Zero Immigration, and I don't want to. I don't want to eat my heart out right now. That's all. I think I'm going to take some Bernie Sanders questions. Make believe uh, he's on the show right now. Rhett on WVNN Radio. Go ahead, please. You have a question for Bernie Sanders? Uh, yes. Um... First thing, I want to congratulate you on your book, and uh, I, this is a three-part question for Bernie Sanders. First part is, I heard that... Well, well, let, me, let, me, let me interrupt you right now. Three-part questions are set-up questions I learned a long time ago in my street days. Please simula simplify and make it one question. Okay. Um, I heard you made $2 million off donations after the uh, debate. I'm wondering if you, since you're a Democratic Socialist, if you plan on sharing that money with the other candidates, or even if you plan on sharing... You know, I can cut you off right now. The typical right-wing lie, 
I did not make a dime off donations. It goes to my fund. My fundraising is all small grassroots efforts. We're creating a prairie fire in this country. That is absurd. Not my wife or I ate one pickle from the money we raised. <laughs> and I was wondering also if you plan on giving any of that money to uh, Jim Webb, knowing that you're a uh, draft dodger, but of course you support the uh, military apparently. Well, typical right-wing question. Of course not. I'm not going to give Jim Webb not, uh, nothing. The man has plenty of money on his own. What does he need me for? I intend not to give away a dime because I'm going to spend every nickel of the money I raise from the good American people in order to make sure this income inequality disappears in this country. Not by giving it away, but by talking about it, by traveling, by flying, by eating big dinners wherever I go. This is how I'm going to solve income inequality. Thank you very much for your right-wing question. What's part two? Oh, no, part two was just uh, wondering. You, you answered all my questions. Thank you, Bernie. Very nice. Very good. See, no one likes it today. I, I don't have his voice down today. I'm off. I don't know. I feel too good. That's the problem. I, I don't know what it is. I woke up feeling good, so I can't imitate Bernie Sanders. I can only do Bernie Sanders when I don't feel good. And let's say I'm low blood sugar, I anguish, slight headache. I can do him perfectly. Because I think that channels who he actually is, a sick, a sick man who walks around in pain and anger and hatred. Then I can get into it. But if I feel as good as I do now, I woke up at dawn. And here's the shocker. You want to hear something shocking? No, I mean, last, remember I said two nights ago I went to a restaurant and I got a massive headache from two beers and a great dinner? I realized maybe I can't even drink the beer now. So all I did was drink two vodkas last night with dinner. One, one before, one at dinner. Show you I'm not an alcoholic. I ordered another one at the restaurant. I took one sip and left it over. I learned a long time ago, an alcoholic, by the way, has no feedback mechanism. Did you know that? D did you know that that's the difference between a drinker and an alcoholic? An alcoholic cannot stop drinking. Say, okay, more and more and more. I have a feedback mechanism. One drink, sometimes the next one tastes no good, I don't drink it. Last night it was after two, third one taste, left it over. I hated spending the $11 on it, and I, I couldn't get my money back, but I left it. Couldn't touch it. Disgusting. I came home, I woke up at dawn. Go figure that out. No headache, no hangover. Looked at dawn, embraced dawn, wanted to dance with dawn. Except she wouldn't give me her number. Now, now I'm getting into the stand-up comedian uh, number. I, I don't want to go there. I, I almost do want to go there, truthfully. I just want to have a good time. Boys just want to have a good time. So people are saying to me at the event, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to wear a bulletproof vest. I said, are you crazy? How can I perform in a bulletproof vest? It'll compress my chest. I won't even be able to talk. I, I won't perform if I have to do that. Let the guy who comes there wear a bulletproof vest. Because I guarantee you some in the audience will break his skull open before he even stands up and opens his mouth. That's all. 855-407-28. My audiences are great. This is not a wimpy audience that goes to see, let's say, uh, a, a typical event, like a global warming event. Uh, a person with a pea shooter could take over a crowd of 5,000 at a global warming event. This event, half the people are retired cops and military. Usually, by the way, at my events, it's 2,000 seats. I reserve an entire row of free for any, ma any, any man or woman in uniform, incidentally. It's so far in advance. Don't, don't write or email. We're not ready yet. We're going to give them away at, you know, at the thing. Uniform people, step right up. That's how we salute you. That's going to be great. I wish it was like two weeks from now. See, I get so far ahead of myself that by the time January comes, I won't want to do it. That's my problem. I'll burn through thinking about it and, and dreaming about it and planning it. By the time January comes, I'll run away from it. It's a terrible thing having an active imagination. You imagine you want to do something, then you, you can't you wait, you build up. Then when the time comes, you don't, you don't want to do it. This is the problem. I do live through my mind. I'll be very... Not that I don't... I do feel my body. Believe me, I, I don't mean that way. No, no. I'm not a liberal. I'm saying I'm in my body. I'm very connected <laughs> to the earth. Oh, yeah, I'm getting connected here. All good. What do you want to talk about? 855... Well, custom agent? Have to confiscate so much welfare fraud from illegals? Not bad. We'll get to that in a minute. We're moving along. Any topic? The news is so horrible. Let me read you the headlines in case you think I'm ad-libbing just to get through the show so I can go to L.A. tonight. Here, France's top weatherman sparked storm over book questioning climate change. In other words, he saw reality. He criticized the world's top climate change liars. He said climate investigation is, is filled with misleading data, so the French are in shock. Chicago police, illegal alien rape sleeping woman. Isn't that part of their lifestyle? 
Uh, next story. Sanctuary cities on the rise releasing more than 9,000 criminals in the U.S. illegally. Isn't that the object? Is to intimidate the population? Next story. Murdered woman hanging from fence mistaken for Halloween decoration. Isn't that normal in Chicago? Next story. FBI director.